Chairman of the full committee, Representative Rogers, for five minutes of questioning. Administrator Regan, EPA's recent regulatory actions put the agency in the middle of state's responsibilities to assure an electric generation mix that provides reliable, affordable power for their citizens. The Clean Power Plan 2.0 requires states to impose costly and unproven performance standards on new and existing power plants. You just testified that no system right now, no system right now has, the adequ has adequately demonstrated to capture 90%. For existing plants, you rely on the same subsection of the Clean Air Act that the Supreme Court said could not be used to force a transition to new generation sources to usurp state authorities over their electricity systems. Administrator, is it the EPA or the states that ultimately decide what the appropriate emissions standards will be for existing plants? For existing plants, so you're talking about coal or natural gas? I'm talking about existing plants across the board. Well, this rule only addresses existing coal. Uh, it does not exi uh, address existing natural gas. So exi is it EPA? Is the answer yes? It's going to be EPA, not the states, determining what's the appropriate emission standard? Is that what I'm hearing? What we do is we set federal standards, and we work with our co-regulators to design state implementation plans to, to meet that. That's the way it's always been done. That's the way that Congress wrote the Clean Air if Act. I, if I may take it back, Congress gave states, line. Congress gave Congress gave states broad discretion to implement emission standards for existing power plants. Under your new rule, if a state chooses a less stringent standard, the state must demonstrate to EPA why its assessment is fundamentally different than EPA's assessment. How do you justify EPA through the Clean Power Plan 2.0 taking discretion away from the states? As a former state regulator, I can assure you that we have not taken any power. There's always been uh, a co-regulation relationship that exists between the states and the federal government, uh, and states have delegated authority to execute and implement these federal laws. Uh, we like to give states flexibility, so I'm Mr. not quite sure uh, the, the way you're positioning the question is not factually correct. As a well, former state regulator. If I may take this back, under the rule, if EPA, EPA could take away states' authority over their power generation with a federal implementation plan. Th there is so, no taking. I just reject the premise that the federal government is taking anything from the states. Is EPA going to issue a federal, if it disagrees with the state's implementation plan, will EPA issue their own plan then? That is the uh, authority Congress has given to EPA. So EPA, uh, Congress gave the authority to the states. EPA is taking no, it away. Congress yeah, and you've written a rule that the courts said could not be used to force a transition to new generation sources or usurp states' authorities. That's just not factually true. We have not written okay. a rule. Okay, okay, we're gonna set that aside then. Oh, okay. I, wanna, I wanna get to, well, I just, I have a problem with a lot of things that are going on right now. <laughs> EPA, billions of dollars for a clean school program that has gone almost entirely to electric vehicles, contrary to the statute. 27 billion in a green bank giveaway to groups littered with Democrat political operatives. I guess you describe them as investing in America. Um, EPA has avoided audit thresholds by manipulating the amount of grants awarded, hundreds of millions of dollars to regional grant makers under an, an environmental justice program, and those grant makers are not even located in the regions that they're intended to serve. But I want to get to home in eastern Washington, because EPA recently listed Lake Roosevelt above Grand Coulee as a Superfund site. And this is going to have huge impacts on my commu the communities that I represent. So I'd like to ask you, Mr. Administrator, why did EPA refuse to give the communities a chance to do the studies and work together to clean it up? Uh, we, we didn't. Uh, the listing of this site, according to our federal authority, helps us expedite the cleanup because it unlocks federal funding when we list these national okay. sites. If it, okay, so. can, I, can I ask you a question about funding then? Um, because the White House recently announced the Columbia River Basin Settlement, uh, which was negotiated by the White House, Includes, it says it includes efforts to target at Superfund sites. Does the EPA plan to use some of this money from the settlement to fund the cleanup of the Upper Columbia River? Uh, it's my assumption that not only will we use settlement dollars, but we can unlock the billions of dollars in the bipartisan infrastructure law to help these Superfund sites expedite their cleanup all over the country. Okay. That's the purpose of the program. Yet to be seen. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. For years, everything from old tires to raw sewage has been dumped into Puget Sound. De this is destroying the salmon populations in Puget Sound. Salmon, salmon runs are in decline. Will EPA commit to enforcing the federal wa water quality standards being ignored 
in Puget Sound before continuing down a path of breaching the Lower Snake River dams? Will we enforce federal standards? Yes, because it hasn't been done for as long as I've been in Congress we, in Puget Sound, the federal water quality standards in Puget Sound. We absolutely will enforce congressionally authoritative federal I'm waiting. standards. I yield back. The gentlelady yields. The chair now recognizes.